waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. You know, I say the callers only get one minute, but then they're telling a story about Switzerland. It's so interesting that I held the guy over. Uh, we're talking to uh, Ben in Missouri, and we're going to go to Johnny, Jason, Jason, Justin, many others. But, uh, yeah, so they've got different cliques that are part of the parades in Switzerland. I've read about that, never been to Switzerland, I want to go. And uh, we've sent reporters there before, the footage is so beautiful. It's like something out of a Wonderland uh, you know, Disney movie or something. You were getting up to the fact that they were having a parade, your parents work in Switzerland, Basil, go ahead. Uh, and so they, uh, one of the main themes to the parade this year, uh, that uh, I think my dad said that there were over 25 floats that touched on the NSA spying. Uh, and I'm going to email it to you, um, the photos. He took a ton of photos because he knows that I'm awake. I'm obsessed with, you know, fighting the new world order, liberty. You know, I'm a total extremist. Um, and uh, uh, one of them in particular was, yes, we scan um, and it, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of good fun being poked at the, uh, NSA spying. So I'm going to send those over, but it's encouraging to me that, you know, people in Europe and Switzerland worldwide are understanding what's going on. And it, it really gives me a lot of hope that my kids will be able to live in a, uh, in a world without, you know, terrorism. We'll do this, do this. Exactly. Write a description, send it to show tips at infowars.com. We'll get it up. And absolutely. So the Swiss... I'm not going to get into their whole story and, and how they started when the Austrians were oppressing them and then there was an uprising and they killed a bunch of the Austrian troops. And it, it's all about the Austrians coming to take their 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 crossbows. So America got its ideas from Swiss, the British, and the Dutch who had armed the citizen movements. And so their fight just came over here. And Switzerland, we had the police by the third day covering in Switzerland, my reporters, joining us in like torch lit processions like out of a Frankenstein movie. Okay, because I mean, we had members of their federal government showing up saying, get out, David Rockefeller. I mean, they get it. They don't want to be slaves. That's why they're rolling in piles of cash and the highest standard of living worldwide. And just are so rich, they can't help themselves because they didn't join the New World Order bankers. We did. We're screwed. Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, let's talk to Johnny in Florida. Johnny, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for waking me up, Alex. Uh, I've been listening every day for the past three years, and uh, I try to spread the word as much as possible. Um, I just want to point out, at, uh, as all these situations have become prevalent, whether it's Libya, Syria, Ukraine, and now this deep with Russia, the masses are waking up to the New World Order and this global technocracy. Um, and it's captured the federal government, and I think it's just rendering itself illegitimate. Uh, my question to you is, is it only cognitive dissonance and the psychological warfare we've been under? Or is there something greater that's holding humanity back? And what's it going to take for us to finally be fed up with all the garbage that's going on in this world? Thanks. That's all I got. God bless you. Great question. Uh, I think you probably know the answer. It's a lot of things. There's chemicals in the food and water and the television. We become spectators. And the government at the low level isn't bad people on average. So how do we get mad at them? We don't. Un we need to get the point out that the the... The globalists have gotten control at the top. But what's holding us back is we still got food in our bellies, even though it's poison GMO. The Romans would hand out free bread in Rome to control the population. They called it the dole. And so they're taking our liberty and our freedom, but still we've got enough food. And so that's why they're able to progress, is that you know still life in the West is better than it it's, is in the third world, and it's still better than any other time in history. So we've got great economic spoils and great opportunities. The world is great in many ways. And we're adaptive. And so as things start to get bad, we kind of muddle through it and live through it. We need to realize there's a prime evil, an anti-human directive, and that the globalists are taking us somewhere bad. You've got to explain to people that, hey, you don't want to go down the spider hole. We're up to the edge of it right now. And we're like, see those eyes in there? You don't want to go in that hole. See all the little skeletons hanging around the entrance? 
We need to get that message out to people that bad men are running things. We need to get them out of control. They want to crush us because they know we could reverse the tide. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on healthcare? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, for the balance of the hour, we've got Harry Dent, harrydent.com, joining us. And, of course, he is the founder of Dent Research, an economic forecasting firm that's really has an accurate uh, record, as reported by CNBC and others that specializes in demographic trends. He's going to be talking about that today, not just here, but Germany and its demographic cliff. And his mission is helping people understand change using exciting new research development from years of hands-on business experience. Mr. Dent offers tools for seeking key economic trends that will affect every aspect of your life. And he was one of the top folks at Bain Capital, obviously tracking those trends to be able to make successful decisions for that company. Uh, and he has his MBA from Harvard Business School, worked at Bain & Company as a strategy consultant for Fortune 100 companies. Here's the headline out of CNBC. Get ready for the Dow at 16,000 by 2016, says a pro. And he broke that down with them a few weeks ago, so I wanted to get him on. I really appreciate him coming on HarryDent.com. And he wants to get into 2014, the year of defaults for China, and Germany falls off the Democrat demographic cliff and how that affects us here and when we hit our baby boomer demographic cliff and more. Mr. Dent, thanks for coming on. Nice to be here, Alex. 
Well, break it down for us. Well, first off, I'd like to cover this Dow at 6,000 by 2016 and then get into the demographic cliff. Well, you know, I'll explain other reasons, but there's a big pattern in the stock market that should be more obvious to people. We've seen three bubbles now, one that peaked in 2000 and 2007, and then now each bubble has gone to new highs, but each crash in between has gone to new lows. So this, this is called a megaphone pattern. It's, it's a very similar pattern to how the stock market peaked the last time a generation peaked in the late 60s, early 70s. There were three tops at higher highs and then a big crash in 73, 74. This would project that the Dow is going to hit about 17,000 in the next couple of months, and then it's going to fall in the next couple of years to just below 6,000. So that's a bigger crash than last time. That's like a 65% drop. So this is not something you should listen to your stock broker and say, oh, just, just stay the course, uh, stocks will come back. When stocks have peaked with major generational spending peaks, like in 1929 and 1968, stocks have, did not get back to those levels for 24 to 25 years. So we're in, I think, for the largest uh, downturn in our life. It's going to be very much like the 1930s, what I call a big debt detox. Uh, so, so people really need, uh, you know, I, I, I actually took a 70% cut in my advance from my publisher to get the demographic clip book out early this year because I, I think we're close to a top here. And I think people need to make some very hard decisions. I agree. I want to talk about that book uh, again, but expanding on this. You're not the only analyst saying this, and we see governments creeping towards the pension funds, uh, both the public and private, the IRAs, all of it. They're going to, quote, save it, I, I guess, when the plunge comes by taking it over and taxing it. Seems to be what they're openly saying they're going to do. I don't think a lot of this is hidden, but I'm not hearing a larger discussion of it. Well, you know, I mean, uh, people should be worried. I mean, taxes are going to have to go up. The government has promised entitlements it can never, ever, ever pay, especially in a difficult economy that I'm painting and seeing for the next six to 10 years. Uh, our population forecasts are much higher than, than they're going to actually be. Births are falling. Immigration falls in times like this. And this is what happened in the 1930s. So, so yeah, people, I mean, taxes are going to go up in all different types of ways, and especially more affluent people, if you don't protect your wealth from this bubble burst and protect your wealth from taxes, uh, you're going to be in for a big surprise in the, in the next several years. I want to get more into that and what your book breaks down, uh, the technicals, but specifically, how would you protect your wealth for the average person? Well, you know, here, here's the thing to understand that we warn people about. This is only happens once in a lifetime. It's a bubble boom bursting, a debt bubble bursting. And when that happens, all financial assets go down. And all you have to do is go back and look at the crash in 2008. Stocks went down here and around the world, large cap, small cap, Asia, Europe, emerging countries. Uh, real estate went down. Commodities went down. Gold and silver went down. And everybody was told, well, you can protect yourself with gold and silver, not in a deflationary crash, an inflationary recession or crisis like the 1970s. Gold and silver was great. It will not do well in this. So you basically have to take your profits off the table, get safe. I mean, you can short the markets if you want, but that takes some guts and that's risky. But if you just get in safe investments, when everything falls, you're going to be able to buy stocks, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents on the dollar. I mean, real estate, 30, 40 cents on the dollar and, and, and everything else. So, so that's the trick. That's what Joseph Kennedy did. In the Great Depression, he got out of the stock market at the top when a shoeshine boy was telling him to buy stocks. He said, oh, man, this thing's got to be over. Same thing. I had every cab driver giving me Internet tips in late 99. I knew that one was about over. And then he just bought when things were down and he made a fortune. That's right. And, and so it's an opportunity for those that are positioned uh, yeah. beforehand. Looking at that, though. Uh, obviously, they're, they're, there's a race uh, devaluing currencies, and I guess the establishment thinks, well, if there's actually a depressionary thing coming, that will somehow balance out. How does the inflation on the dollar and other currencies then tie into a uh, deflationary situation uh, in the rest of the economy? Well, you know, you know, the one thing, out deflation is good for the dollar. When we started to deflate and debt started to deleverage in late 2008, the U.S. dollar went up 27%. It was the only thing that did go up versus other currencies. Now, the reason this happens, people don't understand, and this is, this is something we have to argue with the gold bugs about constantly, but the U.S. dollar fell. 58% from 1985 at its high in the Reagan era down to the beginning of this recession in early 2008 where it bottomed. 
58%. The reason is we created massive amounts of debts, trade debts.